Rub up your engines! Here we go. Tesla's at it again. Now they're looking at a new market, car insurance. Well, you figured, you know, old Elon's kind of greedy, so what's greedier than an insurance company? Take in a whole bunch of money and pay a little bit of money out. And of course, they do it mathematically. If you know anything about insurance, all they do is the mathematics. How many houses, how many cars get wrecks in this area, and then we charge a lot more money than that, and we pay a little bit of it out, and we keep the rest as a profit. Pretty much a license to steal, really, when it comes down to it. And then if there are catastrophic stuff happening, then they just raise the rates in the next year to pay for it. They're not really taking any risk. <laughs> but then they say, like here in Rhode Island, when I was calling places, oh, I'm sorry, we no longer insure a coastal Rhode Island at all. It's too much of a risk. We don't even sell you insurance there. <laughs> Pick and choose, right? Give flood insurance to people that live on the top of a mountain, the very top of the mountain, and it's impossible <laughs> to flood. No, we don't sell it to people in the valley. We only sell it to people in the mountain, right? I was reading about these guys talking about Tesla, an insurance company to insure cars and stuff. Well, it's all integrated, so it's their cars. They'll sell the insurance and stuff, and then they can be integrated with the people that fix it, blah, 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 blah. Well, if you've ever known anybody with a Tesla and they had a problem, it sometimes took months to fix it. You got a monopoly. They're going to charge more. It's all money money going in their pocket, right? <laughs> Anybody who thinks it's going to be more efficient is just another monopoly to take money out of your pocket. Anybody who thinks you're going to save money on that is out of their mind. I'm sure the other insurance companies are quaking in their boots because they don't want another player in their house of greed where they can take money in and pay a little bit out. They don't want more people to share with their big pyramid scheme that they have, you know. <laughs> we want the money. We don't want to share it with you. And interestingly enough, it's a $400 billion industry, insurance in the United States. They spend over $10 billion a year advertising. Next time you talk to the insurance and you say, why are my rates so high? Guess what? Because they're spending $10 billion advertising. And who do you think is paying that $10 billion? We are as the consumers buying their stupid insurance policies. <laughs> it's absolutely absurd. And of course, old Elon doesn't believe in advertising, so he wouldn't advertise his. He just figures he'll sell the insurance, right? Keeps raising the price of his cars, right? Just raise him another five grand the other day. Insurance is extremely competitive. Everybody's going to price around. I found for the same thing in the same place. $3,900 a year, $1,100 a year. And know Elon just likes raising the prices, so I don't see that working out all that well. Getting into things that that's not their forte. He's just looking for more ways to make money. I mean, he's the richest guy in the world. What does he need more money for? Huh? An insurance of all things. The absolute no loser. Just take more money in than you pay out. And then when you run out of money, I'm sorry, we can't afford that. I remember back in the day, my old roommate, University of Illinois, his mother worked for Blue Cross, whatever, in Florida, and he said, you got to find out when their quarters are. You know, they're not necessarily January, February, or March, but they're three months in a row, because at the end of the quarter, they didn't have any money to pay out claims. So they would deny all the claims. His mother worked on the claims department. <laughs> So you had to know, well, this is the beginning of the quarter. They got some money, so put your claim in then. Don't do it at the end of their three-month quarter, because then they don't have any money left, and they'll just deny your claim. I had it happen to me once. I made a claim where I had my head cut in a silo. They wouldn't pay for it, because it was the end of the quarter. And that was Blue Cross, so and they didn't pay for it. This is a long time. It was a whopping 55 bucks. They wouldn't pay it, because it was the end of their quarter. They wouldn't pay for any claims at all. So James Officer Scotty, if you don't smell gasoline in your oil change, is that a good sign the EFI is working properly? Yeah, that and your whole engine. It means the piston rings are sealing. It's not spraying too much gas in the engine. It means your car's running perfectly fine. The EFI, of course, electronic fuel injection it controls the injection system. There's also the ignition system. The piston rings have to seal right. But if you don't smell gas, that's a good thing. Keep doing whatever you're doing. Use the oil you've been using. Change it regularly. And then if one day you do change it and you smell gasoline, you know something's wrong. You mean you got to fix something. No, it's a very good sign. That dude said, Scotty, I'm looking to buy a new vehicle. Do you think the 1.5 liter Honda Accord is worth it? Well, not. What do you recommend? I don't like the smaller engines. Honda makes great engines. There's no arguing that. It's a Honda engine. They've made 1.5 liter engines for decades and they can hold up. They can really go. But yours is going to be a turbocharged one. You put more strain on the engine. It's not going to last as long. And that's just how things go. It is a Honda and they make good engines and they can still last quite some time. They're not horrible engines. But if I had a choice, I would much rather get one that had at least a two liter engine in it. Accords are a relatively large sized car. You need a lot of power to move them around right. And turbocharged 
charging uh, 1.5 liters, kind of a cheap way to get that power. I, I personally wouldn't buy it. I don't like turbos because I'm cheap. I want a car that lasts forever. I don't want it that I got to buy a turbo. I had a turbo, $4,000, blah, blah, blah. No, give me an engine that's strong enough to go down the road. Take my Matrix. It's an 07 Matrix. It's only a 1.8 liter. It's not turbocharged. It's got plenty of acceleration. You need to drive more than 80 miles an hour. I mean, it'll do 100 or something, but on a highway cruising, 75 is it most places. So it works perfectly fine. The turbochargers get them faster, but they also wear them out faster. Craig Halfright says, what pH? E, would you buy those partial fuel efficient electric cars? Well, if I was going to buy something like that, I'd buy a Toyota because I mean, they've been making the hybrids for ages. I'm too cheap to buy a new car, so it'd be a long time before I'd buy one of those. If you're thinking about buying one, look at the actual range because I saw a guy who was thinking about buying one. And he was thinking about buying a Toyota, but he says, I commute. 50 miles each way. So instead, he bought a Toyota Corolla hatchback and he loves it. He gets 40 miles a gallon because the electric ones would not do that trip back and forth. They'd go back into the gasoline motor. So what's the point of buying something that's electric if it's running on a gasoline motor? But if I was going to buy one, I'd get a Toyota one, but I won't be buying that anytime soon. My cars work fine and we're going to have gas for quite some time. I can guarantee you that. Cash Bryan says, I got a 2012 Toyota RAV4. Track lights off and four-wheel drive light comes on. What could it be? Okay, well, as for your track and your four-wheel drive light, it's a software thing with Toyotas. If your check engine light comes on, it automatically turns off the traction control and the ABS for safety reasons, and that's why the light comes on. Odds are you find what's wrong with the check engine light and fix that the other lights will go away because then the computer will turn them back on. Get the code, you got to analyze it. Could be an oxygen sensor, could be all kinds of things. There's hundreds of codes, so get it scanned. A lot of parts stores do it free. They'll give you a little analysis so you can email me. I can tell you from my experience what that code means. But once you fix the code, generally the other lights will go out on the Toyota. It is just oddball software thing like years ago before all this computer crap. If you had a Toyota, a lot of times when your battery light came on, You'd also get your brake light on. It was just a thing that when your alternator stopped charging, it also turned the brake light on, even though there was nothing wrong with the brake system. So, you know, it's just kind of a glitchy thing they have. Lionel Rivera says, What do you think about Mitsubishi rebadging Nissans? Well, it's kind of like going from the pot into the frying pan. You're going to get hot either way. They're both not the greatest companies in the world. But Everybody, everybody nowadays rebadging everything. The Toyota sports cars are rebadged Subarus. And from what my friends tell me in Europe, Toyota sells little delivery vans that say Toyota on them in Europe, but they're actually just Fiat delivery vans. They're Italian vans, and Toyota's rebadging them as Toyota. So, you know, what these people are doing is, I think it's stupid. They are diluting their own name. Why would you want to dilute your own name? You got a good name like Toyota, why would you want to be selling Fiat products under your name? But I guess it's just greed. They want to make a profit. They don't do it in the United States yet. You know, they don't sell vans here that are Italian Fiats and say Toyota, but they do in Europe. I think a company should only use its own stuff. And then the poor companies, they want to jump on the back of the good companies. The good companies should not jump on the back of the bad companies. If I was Toyota, I would have never sold Fiat made vans in Europe and call them Toyotas. Jonathan Bell says, I got 2.4 Equinox. It calls for five liters. It only has three and it's past the dipstick. Help. It calls for five liters. You only put in three and a dipstick's past full. You got something wrong in that engine. Well, first you got to drink the oil all out. Let it all drain. Warm it up 10 minutes, then drain the oil, take the filter off, then put it back together and see what happens. It should be normal. But if it isn't and a dipstick reads above, then you got a problem inside the engine. Something isn't draining oil correctly. It's not going through the system right and it's staying in one place and it's showing you got too much oil. Because if you drain it all out, there's no way that that amount of oil is going to be too hot. The only other thing would be if you've got a problem in the engine. Say your head gasket's blowing, then you change the oil, you put the oil in, you drive it around, water will get in the oil. Then the oil dipstick will go up because oil's lighter than water. The water will sink to the bottom and the oil will come to the top. So it'll look like you got too much oil, but actually you put the right amount of oil in and the rest is water and your engine's destroyed. So if it runs poorly and you're losing coolant, that's what's happening. If you did use the correct amount, that means you're starting to blow a head gasket and the oil floats on the water, so it'll give you a higher reading. Gilbert Hoffler says, I got a 2014 Honda Accord with Earth Dream engine. When I launch from a dead stop, slow response. Does the same when I'm trying to pass on a freeway. Eco and tire grip motor off. Doesn't help, it still does it. It is an eight year old car. Start with the simple stuff. Change the air filter, change the fuel filter, change the spark plugs. And do my video, make your car run better with a little spray cleaner. You want to clean that mass airflow suction, you want to clean the throttle, it can build up with carbon. You'll probably 
probably find that goes away. Now, if it doesn't, you got some other problem. Could be the catalytic converter is clogged up. Could be the fuel pump is weak. They can be pressure tested. Mechanics know how to pressure test it, but it is a Honda. If you do all the maintenance that I suggested, odds are it'll probably go back to normal because they generally can run a really long time after you do a little bit of maintenance like that. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.